friends, in the last presentation, we were discussing about the steps that are involved in the Marshall and Superpave mix design process and we completed our discussion on design aggregate gradation, which we discussed that is an important step uh, to choose an appropriate aggregate gradation out of various options that satisfy the, uh, uh, the, the upper bound and the lower bound criteria uh, given by the highway agency for any given bituminous mixture. So, let us continue uh, our discussion and let us see the further steps uh, involved in the mix design process uh, and we are specially talking about the steps involved in the Marshall and mix design process and we will keep discussing uh, about these steps simultaneously for both the process so that we can understand what are the differences between the steps involved in the Marshall and Superpiff mix design method. We have selected the material including the binder and aggregates, we have performed the design aggregate gradation, we have selected the final gradation to be used, then comes uh, the mixing and compaction of uh, uh, making the mixture, uh, mixing the binder and aggregates together and compacting it to uh, produce a cylindrical bituminous mixture uh, for laboratory investigation. So, uh, talking about the preparation. Let us see what we do to prepare the sample in case of Marshall mix design and what we do in case of superpave mix design. Ultimately, we are going to prepare a cylindrical bituminous mixture. The difference being in Marshall mix design method, we are using an impact compaction, whereas in superpave mix design, we are using a gyratory compactor. So, the mode of compaction is different in both the methods. Therefore, using a similar aggregate gradation and similar binder, when we make mixes using these two methods, they can have different properties because the aggregate orientation while making the mixture in both the methods will be different. Few literatures have indicated that gyratory compactor produces a mixture which has aggregate orientation very similar to what we get from the infield mixes which are compacted under rollers. But as I mentioned, these are very few literatures that have actually evaluated and validated the uh, results. In the Marshall mix design, we use a impact compaction. The amount of compaction to be given, which means the number of blows to be given to produce the final mix, it depends on the traffic level. We will see uh, the number of blows corresponding to the traffic level uh, after few slides. Um, the standard method which we use it uses 75 blows of compaction on both sides, which means once you have the mixture, all right. I will show you the mold and the color here. So, if you can see in my hand, I have this uh, mold and I have, I have the mold and then I have the color. So, this mold is seated on the base plate and over this we put the color and finally, the loose mixture is kept here. So, this collar is basically included to accommodate some extra mixture or extra height because we are putting loose mixture here and after compaction it will be the, the depth will be reduced. So, uh, we will put the loose mixture here and then here we will put our uh, hammer and apply the uh, impact compaction. As I mentioned that uh, we are going to uh, give the compaction on both the sides. So, first on this side we will give 75 blows. And then what we will do, we will reverse, we will remove the collar, we will reverse the sample, put it on the base plate again, put the collar back and again give 75 blows on this side. So, this is how we will finally prepare the compacted bituminous mixture and as an example I have, I think I have previously shown you uh, a bituminous mixture. So, we will have a cylindrical bituminous mixture of this form. Again, some of these additional specifications include that the rate of impact, uh, it should be uh, in the range of 64 plus minus 4 blows per minute. Uh, the number of blows uh, also depends on the type of mix. For example, if you are using a stone mastic asphalt, which is a gap graded mix, then the codal specification specified that only 50 blows are required. Additional blows can cause breakage of the aggregate, so 50 blows is sufficient. Uh, in the standard compaction, we use a 4.5 kg hammer with a 457 mm fall. We also have a modified compactor uh, 
for uh, mixes in which the maximum aggregate size is more than 25 mm. I will discuss about that uh, probably in one or after one or two slides. Coming to the super pipe mix design, as I mentioned, we use a gyratory compactor. In the gyratory compactor, the compaction is controlled using three parameters. These include the vertical pressure, the angle of gyration and the number of gyration, which means how much pressure I am applying on the mixture because we are not applying a contact, which means the loose bituminous mixture is almost in contact with the gyratory compactor. Okay? And there will be some, um, some gap between them, which is basically controlled by the angle of gyration. So, this angle of gyration uh, is also very important and finally, how many number of gyrations we are giving, this will control the finally, the final density of the mixture. The standard which is used in the super pave mix design, it says that the vertical pressure should be in the range of 600 plus minus 18 kappa. The internal gyration angle should be in the range of 1.16 plus minus 0 0.02 degrees and the gyration rate which is given to compact the specimens uh, should be in the range of 30 plus minus 0 0.05 gyrations per minute. And how many gyration has to be given? It depends on the expected traffic level similar to the uh, number of uh, blows which is required in Marshall compaction that also depends on the expected traffic level. In the super pave mix design method, there are three different gyrations which are used uh, as a standard during the mix design process. It includes an initial, n design and n maximum. We will discuss about uh, these also. So, these are some uh, images just to uh, familiarize you with the different uh, compaction process. So, this is a Marshall compactor, you can see this is the compactor and this can be moved uh, up and down. This is the uh, mold with the collar which I just showed you and uh, using this uh, machine we can uh, produce the uh, bituminous mixture. Uh, this uh, pictures, these three pictures, it tells us about the super pave gyratory compactor. It says that what is the uh, internal angle. So, this is the internal angle, the gap which it makes uh, with the sample. This is the vertical pressure and this is the rate of gyration which is used. And finally, this picture shows that how a gyratory compactor actually looks like. Uh, this gives us some idea about the compaction method. Now, once we have the compaction uh, method, let us also understand that how many samples we are going to make, what should be the uh, weight of the sample, how much material we are going to consume and so on. So, in the Marshall method uh, and also in the super pave mix design method, typically the mixes are made at 3 to 5 different binder contents and binder content is represented by the weight of the mix. So, typically we use 1200 gram of aggregate. Now, the weight of aggregate can be adjusted uh, for standard height. So, standard height is 63.5 mm. Let us say you are uh, using x gram of aggregate and the thickness which you uh, got is y mm, but our standard height is 63.5 mm. So, if you find that the value that is y is going much beyond the standard uh, height. Uh, then what you can we can do we can change this x gram of uh, sample uh, aggregates and we can alter it. So, um, uh, how you will do that? So, you see that if you have y mm of height you have to use x gram of sample which means for uh, for 63.5 mm height how much sample will be required x divided by y into 63.5. So, uh, you know this uh, can be the uh, amount of aggregate which we use can be adjusted so that we have the sample of standard height. The dia of the sample is constant, it is 101.6 mm and uh, once we prepare the sample using uh, the Marshall method, the samples are usually allowed to cool overnight, though they can be removed once we feel that the sample has, uh, has cooled down, we can remove it from the mold, but typically we allow it to uh, cool overnight before removal. As I mentioned, we also have something called modified Marshall and modified Marshall method is used when we have uh, aggregates uh, in the mixture whose size is more than 25 mm. In that case, the impact process remains same, but we will use a 10.2 kg hammer and the standard and, and the uh, size of the sample will be also uh, larger than the conventional or the standard size. So, the dia of the sample is 152.4 mm and the height is 
63.2 mm. So, this is the standard height whereas, for standard Marshall 63.5 mm is the standard height and uh, typically we will use around a 4 kg of a sample to prepare the modified Marshall. Also, the number of blows will change for the uh, for the modified Marshall as I mentioned that we use either 75 blows or 50 blows in standard Marshall. If we are using a modified Marshall then these blows has to be multiplied by a factor of 1.5. So, the sample which we are compacting at 75 should be compacted at 112 blows just a multiplication factor of 1.5 whereas, sample which uh, was uh, compacted at 50 blows will be compacted at 75 blows now on both these sides. So, this is uh, some of the salient features of, of the uh, compaction process in the Marshall mix design method. Coming to the super pave method as I mentioned we use, use a gyratory compactor and we have a automated system which means we can continuously monitor uh, the bulk density of the mixture. So, we have n initial. So, n initial is the number of gyration or the initial number of gyration and this initial number of gyration is given uh, or the criteria should be satisfied uh, and it is a measure of the compactibility of the mix. So, let us say if we have a mixture which compacts too easily which means that can be a tender mix. So, we have to prevent the mix from being tender and that is why a criteria is imposed that at this level of compaction that at n number of n initial number of gyrations after n initial number of gyration the mix which we have should have a density in the range of 89 to 91.5 percent of GMM. So, I hope we know that percent GMM uh, is nothing but it tells us about the uh, percentage of uh, solids in the mix. So, if I just uh, subtract 100 from percent GMM it will tell me about the air void. This we have discussed when we talked about the uh, volumetrics of the bituminous mixture. So, uh, it, this means that the mix will have uh, 11 percent to uh, 9.5 percent air void okay, at this level. Okay. Uh, here again uh, you can try to understand that if after n initial the air void is very high, okay, let us say 83 percent of GMM or 82 percent of GMM, this mix will be very difficult to compact in the field. So, that those mixtures should also be avoided. So, n initial we check n initial it, it helps us to reject those mixes which can be very difficult to compact or which are more tender in nature. So, uh, this is an important criteria in the super pave mix design. Coming to the end design these number of this number of uh, gyrations it specifies the infill density and when I say field density it means after years of traffic when sufficient traffic has moved and the mix has finally come to a stage where we are expecting that no further compaction will uh, take place. Okay. So, the number of gyrations uh, to reach the estimated field density which means the design number of traffic has moved over it. So, this is same uh, in case of Marshall as well as super pave mix design that we are targeting 4 percent air void and that is why it is 96 percent of GMM. So, when we are making the mixes in the lab using the super pave method and we are giving n design uh, number of gyrations at this gyration the air void should be 4 percent. Then one more important criteria is n max and this criteria it helps us to um, identify those mixes which can be prone to rutting or shoving uh, in the field. This is an estimate of the final density expected in the field at the end of service life after years of further densification which means let us say the sufficient number of traffic has moved over it and still the mix has a tendency to densify. So, n max will tell us what will be the maximum level of densification in this particular aggregate structure or in this particular mix and this is capped at 98 percent. When I say 98 percent of GMM it means that the mix should not have lower than 2 percent air voids. So, if the air void in the mixture becomes too low then these mixtures can result in plastic flow or it can rut easily and these mixes should be avoided for construction. 
So, these three checks helps us to finally identify a most suitable uh, bituminous mixture to be used for uh, field construction. This is the criteria as I said we have five different levels of traffic. So, for each level of traffic the value of n initial and design and n maximum has been uh, suggested by uh, suggested in the super pay mix design process and at these number of gyrations the level of air void should be met by the mixture. Okay. And uh, you can also see that uh, the what are the roadway applications corresponding to different levels of traffic here. Okay. Uh, some other salient features of the super PAVE compaction process is that in contrast to a Marshall a standard Marshall which is 100 mm in dia approximately the standard sample here is 150 mm in dia and uh, 115 mm in height. These days we also have uh, samples in the super pave gyratory compactor we can uh, produce mixes with 100 mm uh, dia also. Uh, typically the dia of the mold irrespective of the mix design process is chosen based on the maximum size of the aggregate and uh, the dia of the mold should be approximately you can say 4 times the maximum size of the aggregate so that we can avoid the edge effect during compacting. So, uh, in addition to the samples that are prepared for determining the optimum minder content in the super pave mix design method we also prepare samples to evaluate the moisture sensitivity of the mixes and for this typically 3700 gram of aggregate is used and the samples are prepared to meet a criteria of 95 mm height. This 95 mm height is basically selected so as to get a mix which can have a air void of 7 percent which is required to evaluate the moisture sensitivity. Now, here when I say that the height is fixed which means that we have to change the amount of aggregate which can be used to have 7 percent air void corresponding to 95 mm height. So, for this what typically is done uh, typically uh, let us say this is amount of aggregate or the mass mass okay, or a mass of the mix. And then here let us say we have air voids. So, let us say that we are selecting a first a higher weight around let us say 3800 grams. So, for 3800 grams we will use the gyratory compactor we will continue the gyration until 95 mm height is reached. So, uh, at 95 uh, mm height we will see what is the air void in the sample let us say this is the air void in the sample okay? um, and this is 3800. Then we will make a mix let us say at 3500 gram we will keep giving the gyration until the height of again 95 mm is reached. Let us say this is a air void which we get approximately 5.5 percent and this is something which we get around uh, let us say 8 percent. Okay? So, we will just uh, plot a straight line our standard air void is 7 percent and we will know how much material we have to finally used to prepare the mix uh, which will give us 7 percent air void. Okay, so, therefore, it is written that the mass of the sample to be changed for specified air void level. So, we will do trials with two different specimen and then we will perform the um, tensile strength ratio test. I will discuss about this test maybe after two or after few slides and I will also show you the standard mold to uh, uh, using which we will we do the um, indirect tensile strength test. So, TSR is basically uh, derived from the indirect tensile strength of the specimen. In the Marshall mix design method we have something called mechanical testing of the bituminous mixtures which we do not have in super pave mix design. In super pave mix design we have the criteria of n initial n design and n max n moisture sensitivity uh, using the criteria of n design and n initial we and, and the volumetric parameters we will determine the optimum binder content and at the optimum binder content we confirm or we will uh, check the values of moisture sensitivity and the um, air void at maximum number of gyration. But in the Marshall mix design method in addition to the volumetric analysis we will also perform uh, some strength test uh, on the mix and this is done using the Marshall stability and flow machine. So, here what we do we have a mold uh, which looks something like this in my hand if you see I have a mold here. 
and the sample is placed here. So, this is the breaking head and this is how the sample is kept uh, diametrically uh, inside this particular breaking head and then what we do, we apply a vertical load on the top of the sample. So, uh, the load is applied at a rate of 51 mm per minute and this Marshall stability and flow test is done at a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. So, once we prepare the sample, we will condition the sample at 60 degrees Celsius inside a water bath and typically it is done for 30 to 40 minutes. In case you do not have a water bath and you intend to use a air draft oven, then uh, the conditioning period should be increased to 120 to 130 minutes. So, if you put the air draft oven in 120 to 130 minutes, it will give you a similar sample which you will get after conditioning the sample within the in the water bath for 30 to 40 minutes. So, we will perform the test, we will see that what is that particular load at which the sample breaks and we will note down the load. And then we will also see, now try to imagine this that you have the sample kept here, you are applying a load, noting down the maximum load at which the sample breaks and that load is the stability value of the mix. Try to imagine that when you are putting this load, the sample will be coming down, right? The sample will compress. So, the sample, this particular height uh, will now, let us say, become, uh, will, will reduce to this particular height. So, there will be reduction in height from both the type of the sample because the sample will try to flow outside, okay? So, this particular vertical deformation uh, at the uh, at the uh, peak value of the load is noted down and that is denoted as the flow value of the sample. So, flow value represents the vertical movement of the sample at the breaking point where stability is the maximum load in order to break the sample. Okay? So, um, and once we have the Marshall stability values, these values has to be corrected for height difference because as I mentioned. 63.5 mm is the standard height. Let us say the sample has a height of 68 mm, uh, then these, the value of stability for 68 mm sample will have to be converted to the stability value corresponding to 63.5 mm sample and we have correction factors for the same. In flow value, we do not have any specific correction factor, but one important point in flow value is that in case the sample is made using a polymer modified binder, so polymer modified binder can flow more even after breaking. So, in that case, uh, the flow value should actually be waved off as is suggested by Asphalt Institute when we are using a, a polymer modified uh, bituminous mixture. So, in case of modified Marshall method, everything remains the same, the procedure remains the same, but the minimum stability criteria which is outlined by the highway agency should be multiplied by 2.25 times and the check should be made corresponding to this particular value. Similarly, the range of flow values as is suggested by the highway agency for standard Marshall should be multiplied by 1.5 and the check of for flow value should also be made corresponding to the corrected value of Marshall flow. So, this is just uh, an, a picture of a standard Marshall machine and uh, you can see that uh, this is the braking head, this is the dial gauge, these are the dial gauges, uh, this is the load cell and uh, this is how we will uh, give the uh, load to the uh, sample. So, I hope uh, this is clear to you. Moving further, uh, this table shows the criteria given uh, in MS2. Uh, corresponding to the number of blows, corresponding to the minimum stability values, minimum flow values and the other volumetric parameters. So, an important point to note here is that you see in Marshall method we have three different levels of compaction corresponding to three different traffic levels. So, 35 blows is given when we are expecting very light traffic uh, less than 0.01 MSA. Uh, 50 blows is given when the traffic ranges from 0.01 to 1 MSA and 75 blows uh, are given when we are expecting the traffic to be more than uh, 1 MSA. Uh, in contrast, in superpay mixed design, we have, we have uh, 5 levels of traffic and, use, and uh, as we saw that the levels of traffic are as high as 30 MSA. So, this is again one of the major difference uh, in the traffic levels. Uh, used in the Marshall mix design and the superpave mix design process. 
These are the correction factors as I mentioned you can see that corresponding to 63.5 the factor is 1 which is the standard uh, value and for modified Marshall corresponding to 95.2 mm height the value is 1 and if you get if we have different heights of the sample which we have prepared then the corresponding factors has to, to be used to correct the stability values after the Marshall test. And uh, this uh, table it just shows the minimum VMA criteria and we have already discussed that this VMA criteria is dependent on the nominal maximum aggregate size of the uh, aggregates we are using in the particular mixture. All right, so uh, this was about the uh, mixed design uh, process or, or the steps to do the strength test in the Marshall method. Now uh, coming to the super pave method as I mentioned we do not have any specific strength test. What we do we will determine the optimum minder content corresponding to 4 percent air void at the value of uh, end design gyration uh, and then we will see that the other volumetric parameters such as air void, voids in mineral aggregate, voids filled with bitumen, filler to binder ratio this is again taken in super pave mix design and percent GMM at n initial. When I say percent GMM at n initial it means that I am talking about air voids at n initial it should be satisfied as per the standards. Once we determine the optimum binder content then at the optimum binder content we will prepare additional mixes. The first set of mixes will be subjected to moisture sensitivity check and this we will do using the tensile strength ratio. So, we will perform an indirect tensile strength test on dry specimens and wet specimen. Okay. This test is done at 25 degrees Celsius. The conditioning process includes preparing the sample at 7 percent air void. Then the dry specimens will be kept in the water at 25 degrees Celsius for 2 hours and then we will do the dry test here after uh, we have the uh, uniform temperature in the sample. And the conditioning the moisture conditioning is done by keeping the sample at 60 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Then we will remove the sample and then 25 degree Celsius for 2 hours. So, the standard temperature to do the test is 25 degree Celsius and this period and temperature corresponds to the conditioning period to induce moisture damage artificial moisture damage within the mixture. So, we have dry ITS we will do wet ITS and then we will calculate the tensile strength ratio which is ITS wet by ITS dry. Indirect tensile strength is done using the same Marshall machine which we have discussed applying the load at a 51 mm per minute, but the breaking head is different. So, this is the breaking head which you see that we have rectangular strips at the top and the bottom and then we will again place the sample diametrically like this in this way and then we will give load from the top. So, when we give load from the top here top and bottom here uh, using a rectangular strip there will be a cracking which will be induced in this particular phase and this is what we are trying to measure. So, once we have the load the value of p we will calculate the ITS using a simple formula that is 2 p by pi d t and then uh, we will do the same for wet specimens and dry specimens and finally, we will take the ratio. In the super pay mix design method we specifically do not do any performance testing which is not mandatory, but uh, asphalt institute suggests that performance testing can be done to gain confidence uh, on the mix design and this performance testing can include a series of tests to check the properties such as permanent deformation failure or fatigue cracking within the bituminous mixture. And this is the final criteria which is outlined in the super pave mix design method uh, which you can see that we have different criteria corresponding to n initial and design and n max and uh, what should be the percent GMM values. And then we also have criteria corresponding to volumetrics which we have already discussed dust to binder ratio and dust to binder ratio is basically filler to effective bitumen ratio. Uh, and also voids filled with bitumen corresponding to different levels of traffic. So, uh, the steps finally, once we have prepared the mix at end design at 4 percent air void we will see what is the binder content. So, this we will consider at the as the optimum binder content and then what we will do at this binder content 
we will find out what is the value of VMA all right and then we will check whether this VMA criteria meets the uh, uh, design criteria. For example, here they have taken 19 mm as the uh, nominal maximum aggregate size and you can see that the minimum VMA is 13 percent and VMA at the optimum binder content is 13.2 percent which satisfies the criteria. Then we will also check the uh, voids filled with asphalt. So, at the optimum binder content here the value which you get is 70 percent. And for the uh, corresponding traffic, let us say uh, we are targeting for uh, greater than 30 MSA traffic. Uh, in that case, you see the uh, uh, VFB value ranges from 65 to 75 percent, which is again uh, within the limits. You will check the dust to binder ratio here at optimum binder content, they are getting the value as 0 0.9 and the actual uh, design value should range from 0 0.6 to 1.2, which is again within the specified criteria. And similarly, we will calculate the percent GMM at n initial and this is done using a correction factor. So, what they do? They keep on monitoring the height of the sample at n initial and n design. At n design, they will take out the sample, they will measure the actual GMB. Using this GMB and using this particular GMB, they will make a correction factor corresponding to the height because if you see G is equal to mass by volume and if the weight or you can see weight remains the same volume of cylindrical specimen is pi r square h, but we have surface irregularities. So, we cannot use this formula directly, but one thing is for sure that the value of GMB is inversely proportional to the height of the specimen. So, using uh, this proportionality factor, you can take out the sample after n design, measure the GMB and then back calculate the value of GMB at n initial just by using the height factor all right which means that GMB at uh, n initial will be equal to GMB at n design multiplied by height at n design divided by height at n initial all right. So, this is basically the multiplication factor which is C. So, using this you calculate that at 4.7 percent uh, binder content what will be the percent GMM or the air void and this also should satisfy the minimum criteria, the range of criteria. So, we are just uh, completing. So, I, I hope the previous explanation was clear how to do the uh, complete the steps of super pave mix design. Coming to the Marshall mix design, uh, we have to plot the variations again here. Uh, but here in addition to the volume matrix, we are also looking at the stability and flow values which, which is plotted here. Uh, the step here includes that corresponding to 4 percent air void, you find out the uh, bitumen content and at this bitumen content, you check all the other criteria similar to what we are doing in the super pipe mix design method. Okay. So, find the binder content corresponding to 4 percent air void and check if all the other parameters are within the permissible range. Uh, I think one step uh, which I missed here was that I did not explain about the n max criteria uh, which uh, is also required in the super pave mix design. So, after finding out the optimum binder content as I mentioned we have to do a check for moisture sensitivity. In addition to this we will prepare two more samples and then subject that mix to n max number of gyration and then we have to ensure that after n max number of gyration that sample should not have air void less than 2 percent. So, this is the final check and then we complete the mix design process. Coming to the Marshall mix design process as I said that we will check all the other criterias. If these criterias are not met then we have to recheck the design process. If it is met then we will proceed. Though usually not mandatory, but as per the guidelines of the ministry, we also perform a moisture susceptibility check uh, using tensile strength ratio and it should be more than 80 percent. If it is not more than 80 percent, which means that the aggregates and the binder are not compatible. So, you can add a uh, anti-stripping agent or you can uh, use some other technique to reduce the moisture sensitivity and once it is met then we are done, we are we finally select the optimum binder content. Before concluding, uh, because we have completed discussing the mix design process, there are few important things which I would like to put forward and this will be our discussion, this will be our base for starting our discussion in the next presentation 
that marshal stability and flow they are not actual indicators of performance and though previously uh, there was a belief that the volumetric parameters are sufficient uh, to tell us about the performance of the mixture which is actually true that volumetric parameters play a very important role. But since these days we are using different materials, different types of mixes, the volumetric parameters may not give us sufficient information about the performance of the mixtures. So, we have to do some additional performance test or we have to relook at the mix design process and adopt methods such as performance based mix design which we will be discussing briefly in the next presentation. So, that we will have more confidence, we can produce more durable mixtures and our mixtures will perform finally in the field. With this uh, I will end here and today we have completed our discussion on the mix design methods and we have uh, discussed about the Marshall and the SuperPEM mix design. In the next class we will start discussing briefly about the concepts related to performance based mix design. Thank you.